Who? John? John! Hey, come on up. This is for you. <laughs> I didn't see you raise your hand. Sorry about that. Bless you. There's some more information for you to read and study and learn and grow. And we're going to get right into the word. And um, I like to read. We're going to read starting from the book of Luke. I like to re read from the gospel of Luke for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, he gives a lot of details, okay? <laughs> and also, he is a Gentile. He is a physician. And, and the Holy Spirit inspired him he, by the Holy Ghost. He wrote the book of Luke and guess what? The book of Acts. So we go to Luke 24 and 49. We're gonna read that scripture real quick. And we're gonna go to 52, I believe it is. So we're going to be talking today, and I think he put it up there. Did you put it up there? Dispensations. Praise the Lord. So Luke 49, let me give you a little bit of the backdrop here. Um, you know, Jesus has risen from the dead, and he has given his disciples and his followers a last uh, set of orders while he's in the earth, okay? And so here he goes in 49. It says here in verse 49, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the ESV version, but if you read another version, it, said, it reads a little different. Then it says, he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. Let's go over to Acts real quick, the first chapter of the book of Acts. Again, this was written, written by uh, the Luke, who was not an apostle, he was a Gentile and a doctor, a physical medical doctor. But Holy Spirit chose a Gentile to write the book of Acts. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Does that tell you something or what? Yeah. I mean, does that tell you God loves all mankind? It's not just based on the Jews, which you know the gospel came through them. The scriptures came through them. Messiah came through the Jewish race. And thank God for the Jews. Amen? Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, if you're against the Jews, well, you know, just keep on praying because you're, you're in big trouble if you're against the Jews. Okay? We got a lot of crazy things out there, uh, replacement theology and all these things that you got people saying. Uh, but, but let me tell you this here, you know, this is just a news flash. You don't want to be against the Jews, okay? You don't want to be against them. So let's go to Acts, and I love this here, and we're gonna, we got something we're going to show you real quick. So we go to Acts, the first chapter, and we're going to start at verse 4. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, Ye have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Many days. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Come on now. Jesus is getting ready to go, and they got questions. Wouldn't you have questions? I mean, you've been with him three and a half years, and all these miracles and all these things that have happened to you, and then he's leaving, and boy, do you have questions. Because they're thinking that he came to set up the kingdom and deliver them from the Romans. You know, they're under oppression from the Roman Empire at this time, the Jewish race is, the Jewish people. And so Jesus is leaving. I'm like, wait, they're like, wait a minute, Lord. Uh, 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 is this the time? I mean, is this when you're going to do it? And so Jesus said, look, hold up. Just hold your horses there. There's something more important than that right now. I'm not supposed to tell you about the times right now. But I, I do have something I want to tell you, right? So then he says, then he says, um, it is not for you to know the season or the time that the Father has put fixed in his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So, Brother Steve, can you put that picture up for me real quick? Uh, I got a little graphic I want to show you about dispensations, okay? We are living in a dispensation, which I'll get to that in a minute. But you see this chart. I don't know if you can see it real good. I'm trying to get mine up here. 
Okay. You see a chart on dispensations, right? What is a dispensation? It is a divinely appointed order or age. And here the graph you see seven days or 7,000 years. See, God judges time in sevens. And within that sevens, there are, there are years. So you notice this says seven days or 7,000 years. Now the book of 2 Peter says one day, three and eight, yeah. says one day is with the Lord as a thousand years yeah. and a thousand years yeah. as one day. Okay, and so here we have dispensations, and you see a little bit, I don't know if you can see it real good, but you got day one, two, three, four, five. And so day four, I want to start with that a little bit, because Holy Spirit asked me a question one time, and he said, how many years did it take Jesus to come into the earth? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> so I started doing my own little calculations, and calculations if, you know, if, uh, you multiply by 120, if you multiply by, you know, uh, uh, 400 times 120 or 40 times 120 to try to come up with a calculation, right? But really, if you look at it the way God has designed it, if you see day four, the end of that day, you see that little mark up there says Messiah. Yeah. He came at the end of day four. That's over 4,000 years. Because we're getting close to day five. See, we're getting close to day five. <laughs> so you got one, two, three, four thousand. So at the end of day four, Messiah shows on the scene. Now, if I kind of do some calculations on my own and just kind of think about it, if we're looking at four thousand years, so we're at four thousand nine hundred ninety six point five. You know what I mean? Because he's here three and a half years, right? So you got to give account for that half of the year, three and a half years. If 19, I mean, if you say 4,997 and add three, we're right at 5,000. So you see where you got to put that half in there for the three and a half years. So Messiah comes on the scene this day, day at the end of day four. Okay, so can we play that clip? You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Okay, so here we have where Luke picks it up and he's very descriptive. He's more descriptive than any of the other gospels on the ascension. And so he starts in Luke 24 and he goes on to Acts 1. And here we are in Acts 1. And he says, and while they, and when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing, they're gazing, watching Jesus leave. Behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This same Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So here we have the resurrection of Jesus. He's already risen from the dead. He showed himself to his apostles. He showed himself to 500 people. And then he's ascended back to heaven. Okay, he's ascended back to heaven. 
And so the angels are there and letting them know, look, I know you, I know you, I know you stargazing, you're stuck, but uh, hey, 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 look here, look here. <laughs> I know you, I know you, you're sad he's leaving. Uh, you, you, you're wondering, oh, my Lord is gone. What am I going to do? You know, there's a lot of emotions in that. I'm sure some are joy, but some of them are definitely sadness because Jesus has ascended back to heaven and he's, they've been in his midst three and a half years. What happens now? We enter into a new dispensation because a testament is not of force until the testator has died right? So we have the end of the Old Testament and we jump forward right now. And can you put that graphic back up? We're in that fifth day starting right here. Does that make sense to everybody? Fifth day. So we have another 1,000 years. Then we go to the sixth day. So the age of grace by God's mercy is the only timeline where God gives us 2,000 years. It's been 2,000 years since Jesus left and ascended. So you see how God judges that in, in weeks and days, how this here is seven days. When I say seven days, I'm thinking of a week. But in God's mind, it's a week. In our mind, it's 1,000 years per dispensation. So here we are, fast forward, into the dispensation of grace. This is the only timeline where God decided, I am going to pour out my spirit on all mankind. Only timeline. You look in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were not filled with the Holy Spirit from inside out. Be honest with you, let's keep it real. They weren't born again. They had a credit. They did. They had a credit because Jesus had not come. And what, did, what were they going on? You know, sacrifice of bulls and goats. Bulls and goats. The blood, the blood, the blood was shed. So here we are, fast forward, and we're in the dispensation of grace, which is the age of Holy Spirit. God said, I'm not going to just uh, talk to them. I'm not just going to come upon them. I'm going to put my spirit in them. So we have the gracious, gracious gift from God. How many know God gives gifts? Yeah. God gives gifts. But we are gifted with 2,000 years, which most of that is past, to be a part of the Holy Spirit's outpouring. Praise God. So let's go a little further and read the word, okay? So if we go further, you see Jesus, if you go back to Luke 24, he tells them, and I just read this, he says, look here, hold your horses, there's something more important, I got priority here, I got priority, go to Jerusalem, don't go anyone else, where else, you've been with me three and a half years, you've been training, I've shown you the miracles of God, I've shown you the power of God, I've shown to you who I am, oh, but wait a minute here, I got something else for you. Don't go anywhere. Don't go preaching. Okay? Don't go telling everybody you knew me, you walked with me. Not just yet. Hold your horses. Okay? And so here they go in Acts. Let's go here. It says here. In those days, I'm saying, and they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter, John, and James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. In those days, Peter stood up among the brethren, the brothers, the company of persons was in all about 120 people. So you know you got 12 disciples, right? Yeah. Deduct that. What you got left? 108. Then you got Jesus, his mother Mary, and then you got a bunch of people that we don't know besides his brethren. Yeah. So you got ordinary people in this upper room. You got more ordinary people than you have apostles. What does that tell you? Holy Spirit 
is for everybody. Everybody, every person. Because Jesus sent that requirement and there was priority number one for this dispensation. You know, when I got saved as a teenager, I was 15, right? I get saved and then the first thing they tell me, well, you need to get the Holy Ghost. I'm like, what? You know, I didn't know anything about that pretty much. I mean, I read the Bible, didn't understand it, but I, I, I didn't understand it. But that's what they kept telling me. So, you know, since I was so hungry for God, I wanted that. That was number one on my priority list because that's what they told me. So when I went into the Bible, I said, oh, that's what Jesus said. Jesus said, wait. Jesus said, tarry, which means to wait, by the way. Uh, it, it, it means a lot of other things in different places where you go. You don't want to hear about that. But, but anyway, um, it can mean a lot of other things. So here we have them. They're in the upper room. And let's go to Acts 2.4. So Acts 2.4 says, well, let's start at 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting and, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Can you play that other clip? I know y'all visual, y'all. You mm -hmm. like to watch movies. Wait. Don't you like to watch movies? Yeah. Come. Okay. Okay. What are we doing? We're praying. Thank you very much. Wasn't that good, y'all? Yeah. I thought they did the best job of doing a descriptive uh, a description in a movie format of how the Holy Spirit was poured out. Because the Bible does say he came from heaven, right? Yeah. That's like a missile, right? Uh, it reminds me of a missile, an arrow that's going down, and it hits right in that room, and they are filled with the Holy Spirit, and they begin to speak with other tongues. This dispensation is dispensation of Holy Spirit. We are at the end of our dispensation. But guess what? Holy Spirit is still here. He hasn't departed. He came into the earth. This is the church age, a.k.a. church age, dispensation of grace, all those things. The, the dispensation, the time where God has given us power that we can receive inside of us. And guess what, guys? We are near the end. I know you thought I was going to be real long, but, but, but this is the truth right here, okay? Um, we are in that dispensation, and I've explained that to you a little bit about dispensations, and there's other ones, but this dispensation is about Holy Spirit. What I love about Luke, the physician, in the book of Acts, which lasted 30 years, Holy Spirit used him to write about all the acts of the Holy Spirit in our dispensation thus far. Now, that was just for 30 years. We got a lot of acts since then. We got acts right now. Yeah. Okay? But he showed us what was happening. Real quick, I want to take you to a few scriptures. And let's go to Acts. So, one couple of things in the book of Acts I want to show you about Holy Spirit. About Holy Spirit, okay? Now, let's fast forward a real quick example. Christmas time, you got a lot of gifts on the tree. You see your name on them. And uh, 
Everybody's on there, they're pulling their gifts. Oh, you know, I know my grands, they tear open the gifts so fast. You know, they put them all in the pile, the gifts with their name on them, and then they start at it. They start, they start going at it, right? Well, just imagine, Father God had gifts for each of us, right? And we, we got salvation. That's a gift. The Bible says you're saved by faith through grace. It is a gift of God, not of yourselves. Ephesians 2 and 8. So that's a gift. Salvation and being born again is a gift from God because of what Jesus did. But let's say you at the tree and you see this other big gift and your name's on it. And somebody opens your book, your, your prize, your present. You're like, wait a minute. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's, that's got my name on it. So this what the Holy Spirit is for you. God has your name on it. You say, I'm already filled with the Spirit. But the Bible says, be being filled. Yes, yes. So even believers that have received Holy Spirit, okay, Acts, in Acts the fourth chapter, verse 31, you see the apostles come praying, and, the Bible, and they're praying with a group of the believers. And guess what? They're all filled again. How did you get filled again if you weren't filled the first time? First time. Now, there are a few exceptions. You know, John the Baptist, filled in his mother's womb. You know, Elizabeth. We got a few exceptions, right? But that was just showing us what's coming. What's coming is Holy, for Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us so we can walk in a level of power yeah. that Jesus did. Right. He don't want us. Uh, they used to say this when I was a kid. Brill cream, a little dab will do you. I know I'm dating myself, okay? I know it. Flash, oh, she's not 45, okay? <laughs> but they would say that. But guess what? They came out with Tide, and have you noticed that? Everything's extra strength. It's extra strength Tide. It's extra strength this. I mean, everything's double the strength. Have you noticed that? Why? Because you got stains that don't want to come out <laughs> with the regular tide. <laughs> so they said, we're going to double it up. Okay? How, what is that, how does that apply to now? We're at a level in time where Holy Spirit wants to do exploits through us. You saw in the book of Acts, it was more people that weren't apostles in that upper room. So it's not just for the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the apostle, the prophet. It's for every believer. Every believer. And those that are filled, hey, we're not escaped. We don't escape if you're filled. Because he said, be being filled. Singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. And I'm running out of time, so I got to go fast. Okay, so let's go. Acts, we're going to go to Acts, the uh, eighth chapter. Now, one thing I want to say, in the book of Acts 8, 14, you'll see, verse 14, it says, Now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen upon them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they're believers, they love God, they've been baptized, but he said, look, there's another prize under the tree. Okay, another gift. It's bigger. I mean, it's bigger. This is an explosive gift. Okay, then he says, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, if we go to Luke 9, I want to set, if you got fear of anything, Luke 9, Jesus is telling them, look, if I come to you, if you're, you know, if my father, come, you go to your father and you say, look, father, I, I need some bread, I'm hungry. And now, is he going to give you a stone? Throw a rock at you? No, you're not going to do that to your son or you, Josh. You're not going to do that to your daughter or you, Jesus. You're going, to say, you're going to say, come on in, open the fridge, open the cupboard. It's all you want. Yeah. You're my kid, and it's on, you know, like Donkey Kong, they say. <laughs> so anyway, 
So anyway, uh, the book of Luke says, if you ask for, um, uh, let me go there, Luke 9, real quick. If you pull that up real quick. If you ask for, um, I forget that scripture, but what it says is, if you ask for, it's Luke 9, oh, is it John? It's Luke. Isn't it Luke? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. You can look it up. Help me out. But what it's saying is, I'm not going to give you nothing evil. I'm not going to give you uh, a serpent. I'm not going to give you a scorpion. In other words, some people have fear about Holy Spirit because when they receive him, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they begin to speak in another language, and they're like just freaked out. I don't know about that. That's weird. I'm not doing I, I think I'm going to hold up here and back off. But, but Jesus named it the requirement. It was his number one order, assignment, as soon as he left. Don't do anything, y'all. I know you think you, Peter, you think you're the head, and I know you love to talk and all that, and you about ready to <laughs> preach, and you about ready to cast out devils. I mean, you know, I'm just paraphrasing here, you know. And, uh, and the sons of thunder, you know, they was ready to burn up somebody. Uh, 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 when, you know, when Jesus told them, uh, when they, he said, they told him, Lord, you know, do we uh, call down fire from heaven? <laughs> Woo, we about to torch a few people. Jesus didn't say do that. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait for a promise of the Holy Ghost. So here you have eight years later in the book of Acts, they're still being filled. And guess what? Hands are laid on them to receive the Holy Spirit. Hands are laid on them. When hands are laid on them, you know what you do? Some people feel, you know, a little bit uncomfortable. Oh, just relax. Hands laid on you, just whoosh. yield. Yield means a part of your will, by an act of my will. It's not scary. And so you go over to Acts 19. I'm going real fast because it looks like I got two minutes, y'all. So if you go to Acts 19, you'll see 19 and 17. These people said they was disciples. They had never heard if there was a Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Okay? 19. And we're starting at verse 19 and 1. So I'm going to read it to you. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. Now, disciples, followers of Jesus, love God, disciples. Okay? And, and it says, and he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Did you? They said, no, we don't know nothing about no Holy Spirit. Right. <laughs> All we know is we received, we believed and we received. We have no clue what you're talking about. Yeah. Can you please explain? Yeah. Explanation is required. Yeah. Okay, I'm paraphrasing. And they said, no, we have not seen that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what then were you baptized? They said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was come after him, and that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and Paul laid his hands on them. The Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking in tongues and prophesying. They were all about 12 men in all. I'm going to tell you, I was in a service, and I had some people come up wanting to be filled with the Holy Spirit. One lady, a Catholic lady, and there's a lot of Spirit-filled Catholics, so glory to God for the Catholics. I'm not saying nothing against the Catholics, okay? <laughs> but this one lady came up in the line, and so, you know, glory to God, I'm just laying hands on people. Lay hands on her, she just started speaking fluently. Just standing there, just intelligently. Oh, okay, well, well, yeah. She's just speaking in tongues. Catholic lady. Now, another lady in the line, okay, she uh, put her hands on her, put her hands on her, and she started doing like this. I mean, she had a dance going on. No, no, no. She was like, 
Ooh. She was just screaming like she was feeling some fire, like she was burning up. And so she didn't speak with tongues. But guess what? Next time I saw her, which was a week later, the lady said she was walking in a health food store. I don't know if it was the vent coming down or what. She walks across this vent and starts speaking in tongues. Well, what happened? Why did she speak later? She spoke later because that's when she yielded. That's good. She could have spoke when she felt that fire on her. You may not feel fire. You may not feel the vent or the wind blowing on you. But the point is, Holy Spirit, one way, if you read the Bible, three times out of five in the book of Acts, you can check me out when you get home, the Holy Spirit was poured out, hands was laid on them. And so today, this is what Holy Spirit has told me to do. If there's someone here, if there's someone here, and you say, I'm afraid, well, you already know, you're not going to get a snake, you're not going to get an evil spirit, you're not going to get stones thrown at you, nothing bad is going to happen to you. You're just going to receive that endowment of power that Jesus said, for the apostles in the 120, it's a requirement. He said, you, you want to do something for me? You got to have my power. Yeah, you, you're part of me. You belong to me. You belong to me. I love you. I died for you. And you are saved. However, a little bit more information. Holy Spirit, uh, you have to wait for this promise of my Father. And Jesus gives the Holy Spirit. So we're going to bow our heads and pray. And I, and, um, and I want to ask, if you are here and you say, I never received it with the evidence of speaking in tongues, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. And this is not to force anyone, but Holy Spirit brought it to my mind a couple weeks ago. That, you know, out of the book of Acts, three out of the five times, Holy Spirit poured out, hands laid on them. Am I going to slap you and beat you down? No. I'm not going to like, whoosh. It's not going to happen like that. But if you're here, Father Rapa Shekadosh Tabah, and while we're waiting, while you're deciding, Rapa Kaste Kori, would you mind coming up real quick? Halama Shekoko, pray saints. Rapa Rekede. Reke How you doing? How's it going? All right. You doing pretty good? Yeah. I need to take this off for a minute. 